All right, let's talk about how do we get, how do we eat vitamin C? Mainly fruits and vegetables. I mean, these are your big your big sources. I've listed some of the powerhouse foods here. Um, probably one of the biggest, you know, pound for pound is kiwi. Although what's not on this list is acai. Uh, berry, which is high in vitamin C as well. Moringa is high in vitamin C as well, not on this list. But again, there, there's a theory about vitamin C and humans' ability to see in color, and that's that most foods that are rich in vitamin C are vivid colors, the, the oranges, the yellows, the blues and the purples. Um, these, these starkly differently colored fruits and vegetables, we believe that humans, because humans lost the ability to, um, to or, or maybe not lost the ability, but didn't have the ability to produce their own vitamin C from glucose, developed color vision so that they could seek out vitamin C. Again, this is a theory. They developed it to find sources of vitamin C. So, um, interesting theory. I don't know how true it is. I don't know how it could be proven or disproven, but I, I, I do find that that's a nice tidbit. Okay, let's talk about vitamin C. I mentioned, how do you test, uh, well, I mentioned some testing before, but how do you test for vitamin C, if you want your doctor to measure it, pretty much the only way they're gonna do that is they're gonna do what's called a serum test. And if you're looking at reference ranges, the general reference range is like 0.4 up to two, and that's um, milligrams per deciliter, and that's in the blood. Um, and as I mentioned before, if you're less than, if you're 0.2 or less, you know, this would be scurvy. And so um, that's a simple one that anyone can request if you've got insurance, if your doctor's willing to run it. Like I said, it's about an $80 test, even if you were to come out of, po out of pocket and pay for it, might be worthwhile doing. I, I do see quite a bit of serum vitamin C deficiencies because it's something I do measure. Now I also, I, I measure it, but I prefer, and I also measure what's called INA, intracellular uh, nutrient analysis, where we're looking at the functionality of lymphocytes, the white blood cells, with vitamin C. And so this is an outcomes test. It's not really a reference range. It's more along the lines of a test that measures the function of the cell in response to administration of vitamin C. So we give the cell vitamin C, and if the functional outcome of the cell improves, we know the cell's gonna um, do better if we, if we give vitamin C, so then we, we know the patient's gonna do better if we give them vitamin C. But this is, in my opinion, a much more accurate way to assess vitamin C. Now there's urinary tests that can be done too. There's also leukocyte or white blood cell tests that can be done as well. But, um, Finding a doctor to do to do that, you you, know, you could ask for it, you could request, but you're, you're gonna hit a stone wall most likely. This one you won't hit a stone wall with. This one you can do, you can even do it online direct to consumer, especially if you go through like Gluten-Free Society, we offer an INA that people can run that measures you know, not just vitamin C, it measures you know, more than 50 nutrients, but vitamin C is one of them. But that's the way we would test. And in terms of supplementation for vitamin C, You know, there's, um, there's different forms of vitamin C. There's, um, there's just straight up ascorbic acid. But the problem with that is that for some people is it irritates the stomach. And, and so it's not generally very recommended. Then there's ester C, an esterified vitamin C. Usually when you, when you find a supplement like this, it's usually got other bioflavonoids like quercetin in it or rutin or asperidin. Um, 
And that's not a bad, it's, it's, it's a pretty good form. There's, there's some research that shows that there's some enhancement to bioavailability, but, but to tolerability. And then there's also ascorbic acid, which I prefer ascorbic acid, but the, key, the caveat here is that it's buffered. I like buffered. When you buffer it with minerals, um, what ends up happening is, is, is this part goes away. You don't irritate the stomach because you buffer it. And so it doesn't tend to create any kind of side effect or problem. The other reason I like it as ascorbic acid in a buffered form is because generally you can take it as a powder and it's not so tart or bitter. Um, and it goes down real easy with a little bit of water. You can take it in pill form too, but powder form is going to be, in my opinion, more effective because in you know, the capsules, your, your stomach still has to break down, your intestine still has to break down, but in the powder form, it's just going straight in. Now, you'll also find out there some liposomals. I'm not, I'm not sold too terribly much on the liposomals. I just haven't seen them be more effective than pure ascorbate buffered. But also, a lot of your liposomals... The way, they, the way they liposolize them is they use corn derivative, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, those of you who know me in my, in my work, no grain, no pain. I don't like to use products that contain grains, including corn. And so one of the issues here I, where I don't really care for a lot of the liposomals on the market, most of them do contain corn as part of the process. Even if the label doesn't say corn on it, if you call them and ask them how they're producing their liposomal, there's corn in that process. So um, ideally, this is my favorite. Now, in terms of doses, there's a range of dosing for vitamin C. I think a pretty safe place to be for most people, um, you know, is about 500 milligrams a day. Keep in mind that the RDA, um, in the U.S. at least, the U.S. RDA, for vitamin C for men is like 90 milligrams a day. And there have been many, many researchers that have said this is way under the mark. This is, and I think for women it's 75 milligrams a day. And I agree, I, I think these are under the mark. I don't think it's enough. And there's enough ample data and enough long-term data and trials that show that when people do more than that, when people are in the three to 500 milligram range a day, of vitamin C, there's a lot of benefits that come with that that far beyond these, these um, 90 to 75. Now, it used to be lower. It was raised um, several years ago. And, and remember how these were originally formed. The original US RDAs were formed um, based on how much was necessary to not have full-blown scurvy. And so you have to understand that when it, you know, if we're talking about scurvy, by the time a person develops scurvy, the vitamin C deficiency has been going on for a while. And, but there's a, there's a prodromal period between health, scurvy, and then in the center somewhere, there's what we call kind of preclinical disease, where maybe you don't have the full-blown hemorrhaging under the skin or the hyperfollicular keratosis and the bleeding gums. Uh, but maybe what you have is you have a pronicity to injury. Your collagen is becoming weaker because there's not enough vitamin C to support healthy collagen formation. So maybe you just bruise easier. Um, or maybe your gums bleed sometimes, but it's not as severe as like the full-blown illness. Maybe you didn't develop the severity of pain, but again, there's these preclinical um, there's this preclinical area. And so this, this is where I, I think most humans should be is three to 500. Now you could supplement that. You could eat it with your food. I think ultimately you should eat some in your food. Um, that's what food is for, but you might consider supplementation in this range. This is a pretty kind of modest um, supplementation. So that being said, we talk about therapeutic. How do you get therapeutic with vitamin C? There's a couple different things that you can do therapeutically. One's called a flush. What's well, known as a vitamin C flush. And this is where you take approximately six grams, I know it sounds like a lot, six grams of vitamin C um, every 15 minutes until your bowels start moving, basically until diarrhea. 
And for most people that, that are in generally pretty decent health, it takes about four doses. So it takes about 24 grams. Um, and, and for many, it takes a lot less, but this, these are just generally on average. And then for really sick people, we'll see it, you know, 40 plus. But um, doing this as an exercise, Kind of gives you an idea for what your maximum upper intake could be if you if you just wanted to to take more vitamin C. So, excuse me. So the way the way we look at this is, let's say it, it took you ten grams, ten grams to flush. Then you would then take seventy five percent of that ten grams. So that'd be seven point five. 7.5 grams per day. If you're trying, this is like if you're trying to be super aggressive. If you're trying to be super aggressive with your vitamin C and take a really high dose regimen. What are the side effects? If you get too high, you're going to start having a lot of gas and bloating and a potential um, loose bowel. So you don't want that. So if, you know, if you do this and, and you start doing this, what sometimes happens is as you saturate your tissues with vitamin C, you, less becomes better, right? So maybe you don't quite need that 7.5 anymore. And so over time, over the course of two to three, four weeks, you need less uh, because your bowels start to become uh, bloaty and, and loose. So at any rate, that, that's where if you want to go really high dose therapeutic, maybe you're trying to support yourself going through cancer, maybe you're trying to support yourself going through some type of autoimmune arthritis. So you can get real aggressive with it, but, but the way you, would, uh, you, way you would do your dose, because dosing is different for everyone, is you, is you try to do a calibration by doing a vitamin C flush first, and at six grams every 15 minutes until you have diarrhea, and then whatever that amount, whatever that amount turned out to be, um, you would multiply it by 75%, and that would be your daily dose then for the next several weeks and then um, and then pay attention and then you can do a recalibration of this and usually what happens is the dose comes down with time you don't need as much over time now if you do that be aware you know that you need to stay home and have a toilet close by because this is this process takes for most people takes about anywhere from three to eight hours and I've seen it take longer and, and I've, I've seen it take longer in really really sick people where where it's taken 20 24 hours I, I think the most I've ever seen it take a person was over 150 grams to actually complete the flush um, and they couldn't but they they couldn't take six grams every 15 minutes the way it, they anyway that it's another matter but my point is um, stay home be next to a toilet and if you vomit while you're trying to do this just stop the flush don't don't push past that it's one of the other side effects that can occur so don't push yourself beyond that um, outside of that there are a number of different studies that explore different therapeutic ranges of doses of vitamin C ranging anywhere from 500 milligrams a day to 5,000 milligrams a day I think the the powers that be make the claim that 2,000 milligrams a day is the upper tolerable level. But I mean, clinically, that doesn't pan out. 2,000 is nothing when you're talking about a sick person who um, you're using vitamin C to try to support. So the upper tolerable intake here at 2,000. So if you want to play it safe, just don't go above 2,000. But if you want to explore a little bit higher, I recommend you do a vitamin C flush, calibrate your dose, and take that 75. Now, when you're taking that 75%, um, this again, in the case, let's say you took you 10 grams, and so 75% would be 7.5 grams. You don't take all 7.5 grams at once. The way you would space that out is you'd space that out over the course of the day, typically in three to four divided doses. So you divide that by three or four and you take you know, anywhere around one to one and a half grams of vitamin C every several hours. One of the things we do know about vitamin C is that when you get into doses above, you know, if you, if, if at, a, at three to 500 gram, milligrams, you absorb almost 100%. But when you go above 500, that incrementally the absorption 
goes down, right? So above 500 milligrams, the rate of absorption drops. And I think, I, don't quote me on this, but I think it's at, at 1,000 milligrams in a single dose, you're actually absorbing about 60 to 70 percent of that 1,000 milligrams. So just know that, um, that some of it's going to come out of you. And, and remember, vitamin C is an osmotic. A lot like magnesium, it, it loosens, it pulls water into the bowel, which is why if you take high doses in short periods of time, you'll have diarrhea. But some people use vitamin C as a laxative as well. They use it as a, if they're having constipation problems, maybe um, trouble going to the bathroom on the regular, using vitamin C or using magnesium as an osmotic uh, can be an effective way to, to, to push your stool through you. So at any rate, I hope that's helpful for you. It's always best to work with the doctor, honestly, if you're, if you're doing higher doses. If you're staying around these smaller doses, it's not a big deal. But if you're going into the higher dose realm, you know, ideally you want to work with somebody who can guide you through that, who's got some experience and can share with you, you know, what to expect. Ultimately, though, test own gas. If you aren't sure whether or not vitamin C is the right move for you, um, you know, consider getting with your doctor and getting a test done to explore whether or not um, taking it is something that is worthwhile for you. Oh, at the end of the day, it's pretty safe at these doses, and um, it's really inexpensive as a supplement. So um, there you have it. A breakdown on vitamin C. I hope you enjoyed this course. You can check out some of my other classes on vitamin C here. I've done other dives into other parameters of vitamin C. We could write archives of novels about vitamin C and human health. So check those out here. And if you want to watch more of my nutritional crash courses, you can check those out right here as well. I've got an entire library from A to Z on vitamins and minerals that you can learn more about. Hope this show was helpful for you. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe and like button down below and make sure if you have a family member that could benefit from this information, share this with them. Together we can spread the word and help save 100 million lives. Take care and we'll see you in the next show.